paying them, or is the county paying any of these fishermen or folks? Private citizens are paying them. Will we, these folks be reimbursed? Um, I, no, I don't believe so. We are going to enter into an agreement, we believe, with the state. But all of those agreements, when we're using money other than the county's money, are requiring, even the county's money would require them to have insurance, to have permits. Um, this is not your normal customary going out on a fishing trip. There's, there's insurance requirements, um, and all those issues need to be worked out, and we just don't have the time to deal with each individual fisherman to enter into each individual contract with 20, 30, 40, 50 fishermen that might be willing to help. What about a plan in the future? Some people are concerned that you all waited a long time and came up with the plan. What about if this happens again? Well, if this happens again, this is the first time we've taken on a challenge like this. We'll be uh, a little bit more prepared. We'll have uh, contracts that we'll put into place this time around that we'll hopefully be able to use in the future the same template in order to get ahead of the game. But this is the first time the county's taken on a challenge. We've been in touch with the other counties up and down the coast um, about what they might be doing. Uh, I think we're getting out on the front end of this. But it's, uh, it's a challenge that we've never faced before. And what do you want to tell residents who have been patiently waiting for this cleanup? It's it's on its way. We begin next week with the when we, as Charlie indicated, we'll be doing a survey weekend to determine the hottest spots within the county. So at the beginning of the week, we can hit them first. Can I jump in? Sure. Just have a question. Well, just take it. Just for seats. Just. Just um, for uh, verification, the county commission did have a meeting on Tuesday, and we did discuss this. You had a presentation at the meeting and then after the meeting as well, and we were addressing this with local fishermen, and you gave us a list of um, areas where you have big dumpsters with waste pro waste management. So if anyone wants to, you know, you have a canal and you want to clean up on your own and you want to uh, dump the, um, the debris somewhere, there. On our website, you have a list, I believe, Nick, we have a list on our website where all the, the dumpsters are that they can uh, participate in this. And it's just a real uh, shame right now that, um, you know, it's devastating to see our treasured fish and the wildlife and uh, the mammals being subjected to this. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to uh, the answers very, very soon. But I really wanted to thank the county administration for calling me this afternoon to say that they're going to hold this press conference to be out in front of this and I appreciated being included today and any questions feel free to um, call your district or at large commissioners and um, we'll help in any way we can. Thank you. We will be setting up a hotline for citizens to call in and report uh, as we do during the storm events so that we get a consistent message out to everyone in the community and uh, be able to answer their questions quickly and accurately. I might add also, we're, each of us are set up to uh, carry this message out to the community, and this is a message Manatee County wants to give. We're one of the first counties to react at this level and at this intensity. I, I don't believe, I might be taking a little risk here, but by saying that I don't think our other counties are moving to the back canals of residents to help them deal with this problem at this time. So yes, have we taken the time to study the problem, get the proper com company down here to take the action? Uh, we have. Are we going to be taking action next week? We are. Is that happening in other counties? I'm not so sure. Should we probably check? Um, I was at WCIND this morning, and no, none of the other counties are doing this, just so you know. I, we've all, we were all talking about how, we're, how they are reacting. And I, uh, they had said we heard there's somewhere where people may be using Cortez fishermen. I said, well, it's us. They aren't doing anything. So um, Charlie's correct because I was just down in Venice this morning at the WCIND meeting. And I think you know again, you know, over this weekend we'll be surveying all the areas for the residents, and and we'll be coming up at some point with a plan and trying to hit the the heaviest places first, obviously, and then working back from there, at providing logistically. The contractor can do that, but over the weekend we're still going to be working all weekend, making sure that we know, you know, where are the best or the biggest 
kit, uh, fish kill areas and how are we going to get in there starting early next week and get those cleaned out and then we'll work backwards from there. We have a hotline for citizens to call starting Monday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. That number is 941-749-3547. 941-749-3547. Three five four seven, and that will be staffed beginning tomorrow to answer any citizen questions. Well, could you give me the spelling of the contractor? Uh, sure. It's A P T I M. Out of Boca Raton, Florida, with offices in uh, St. Pete and Tampa. Do you guys think this is going to have a long-lasting financial burden on the county in any way? This mm -hmm. crisis. We don't know yet. Don't we're we going to take this a day at a time. And we we have no idea if this is going to last a week or a month. And, and we are getting assistance from the Department of Environmental Protection, State of Florida, uh, to support these costs. Can you think about uh, possible help for fishermen who are potentially going to be devastated by this loss? Our economic development folks and the uh, people. Sorry. Oops. Sorry about that. Our economic development folks and our economic development corporation in Manatee County, the EDC, have been in touch with them and uh, our own staff has been in touch with them in order to provide any assistance from the Small Business Administration and other state and federal organizations that could possibly help them during this time. And can you guys give any estimate on potential costs? Not at this point. We, we will know after they get boots on the ground and they can survey the area, we'll have a better idea of the total cost. We are going to ask the board on Tuesday to appropriate it, a half a million dollars and uh, to begin the process and we'll determine the actual cost as we move forward. And do we have a time frame how long this will take? No, no. As long as there's red tide. And you can tell me how long that will be. You're surveying this weekend and then starting Monday to clean up. Yes. About how many people are going to be working on this project? You know, Charlie. Okay. Well, there, there, there'll be nine contractors. Uh, there'll be nine contractors, and about uh, seven direct staff, and about 30 strong staff behind them, uh, staffing the uh, overtime, the beach cleaning, and the uh, citizens response center, uh, where we'll be taking calls. And providing answers. We have the contractor plus a number of county staff people involved in this. We'll be taking up the phone system of the employees and we'll be volunteering to do that. We'll be taking up the landfill folks will be involved. Charlie's operating staff uh, from the Parks and Recreation were directed to this project. The utilities department folks and the landfill folks will be involved. Uh, so we have a cross-section of county staff involved and we'll be tracking all the costs that they incur dealing with this special operation. And the jobs those county staff would usually be doing, are there any services they're going to be suffering because of this cleanup and work downs? We are not contemplating any services that will be ceased or slowed down in any way, shape, or form. We're continue to do the work um, without any impact, uh, material impact to the service to the citizens as we know it today. Well, I've got to ask, uh, we've got to finalize the budget next month. Who's going to affect next year's no. budget? Or? No. We established in the budget a reserve for contingency for unanticipated activities. This would be right under that heading of unanticipated activities that we don't anticipate going to the board and recommending any changes to the budget that was presented to them earlier this year. All right. Yes, we're done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all you very much time. for coming. Get the news out. <laughs> and we're the only county that's doing this. Oh, Mr. Sarasota, Lee, Charlotte, and